Good morning to the world of NDE 4.0. One full day of NDE 4.0 sessions. Wonderful. When I, we started it last year, I couldn't imagine where we are at today. today. Yesterday with our NDE 4.0 committee, with all the participants, thanks to everybody for sharing. And now let's get into it. So, let's see, is it, yeah. So, NDE 4.0. NDE 4.0, it's coming from the term Industry 4.0. And if we think about Industry 4.0, Industry 4.0 is the fourth industrial revolution, or the upcoming fourth revolution. But if we are talking about a fourth revolution, we have to talk also about the first revolution. And if there is a first revolution, there has to be something before that revolution. And before that revolution, oh, I see that I did my slides different than on other presentations. <laughs> so talking about Industry 4.0. If we talk about Industry 4.0, Industry 4.0 itself is a buzzword. And connected to that one buzzword, we have dozens of other buzzwords connected to it. And we will come to it. What do they mean and what do they mean for NDE? But now coming back to what was before the first Industrial Revolution, and that was handcraft. People were always producing, since the beginning of days, they were producing stuff. They were using their muscles, they were using fire, simple tools to create stuff. And then there came the first revolution, mainly based due out of regenerative energies, mostly in the textile industry. And just a couple of weeks ago, I learned that, yeah, in the beginning of that first industrial revolution, actually there were two wars about it in Germany. Because people didn't like it that somebody was taking their jobs for creating all the clothes by doing it in, in an industrial way. And, but if you imagine it, back then people had yeah, one set of clothes. Currently, how many sets of clothes do you have in your, in your rooms? So this is what this first revolution changed. Then we came to the second revolution. Now, the second revolution is really based on new physical, new chemical knowledge, on electricity. Due to all those facts, we got into some early mechanization, um, into some mass production modes, into new industry, like the, uh, some chemical industry, pharmaceutical industries, car manufacturing, and finally also the assembly lines. Third revolution, now this one is based on microelectronics. All the electrons were getting smaller and smaller. We had all those small ICs around, and that was the start of computers, which enabled us to yeah, automate it, to automate the mechanization we had on the second revolution. Now, also drones, robots, and stuff like that, that all belongs into the third revolution. Now, for sure, this is also important for the fourth revolution, but the basis for that is the third. Now coming back to all of those buzzwords for NDE for, or Industry 4.0. And if we look into it, there is one which is called 5G. Now we all know 3G, 4G, and now 5G, we could imagine, yeah, that's just a quicker way of connecting our cell phones. No, it's actually more. Because there is, this is just one part out of three, which is the, which is really for 5G. 5G has a, one operation mode, which is for industrial production, where we are talking about, yeah, a high number of devices in a very small area, like one million devices in a factory hall. That's what 5G supports, and also cheap devices. So this is why 5G is that much connected to Industry 4.0. Then we're talking about smart factory industrial internet of things. That is, yeah, the major idea about industry 4.0, we are connecting all kinds of data so that we can improve design, improve production, and improve the product. Then we have stuff like feedback loops, probabilistic lifing, reliability engineering, predictive maintenance, or trending. Now, all of this is how we can use all of this data 
to actually improve the production. It's just different names for similar ideas, and there are multiple more around. Then we have big data, artificial intelligence, helping us to understand and to grasp all of that information we have for all of those methods to learn something about. Augmented reality, so that we can visualize the data. Augmented reality now is also tightly connected to remote assistance. It's another idea of NDE 4.0, so that we do not have to have the specialist at location, but to, we can have a specialist sitting somewhere else and an operator doing it, and once he needs help, yeah, he can connect his specialist. Digital twin. Now, digital twin, it's another core component of this whole industry 4.0 because this is the place where all of the data is combined, where we store all of the data because this is the yeah, virtual representation of a physical object. So all of the data which is connected to that physical object needs to be stored in that digital twin. And finally, coming to digitization and 3D printing. Now, for me, those two, they are buzzwords connected to Industry 4.0, but they are not really part of Industry 4.0. Because, yeah, digitization, it started with the third revolution, if you think about the slides I showed before. But it's a continuous approach, uh, it's a continuous evolvement. We started with simple digitization, and now we are getting more and more enhanced. We are combining more and more data. So that's what, why digitization is still a part of Industry 4.0, even that it was already Industry 3.0. And additive manufacturing, if you think about it, it's just another manufacturing technology. It's not like something groundbreaking and like all the other, but what, so it, for me, it's not, it's part of Industry 3.0 the third revolution, but one real difference is additive manufacturing allows lot size one. Every single component can look different. And that's what makes it interesting for industry 4.0. So, coming back to all the evolution we had through the industrial revolution, and yeah, we are now here in the fourth revolution, and what you see is it's all about data. It's all about how we can use data to create something better, to enhance our production design and so on. So now coming to NDE, what does all of this mean for NDE? And before we look into NDE 4.0, let's also start with history. With NDE, people were always using their human senses to see what is going on in a component? They always looked at things. They took a small hammer to, to hear what's going on. They smelled at components to know, yeah, is what I produce, will it be lasting? First revolution in my eyes is that we started using some small tools to help enhance our senses. And you could imagine simple optics, stuff like choke, uh, chalk or colors or etching methods. But the real point, so that it can be called NDE for me, is procedures. So that the inspections are done repetiti repetitively the same way. That we get somehow results we can compare to each other. Second revolution, exactly like an in industry based on all physical knowledge, based on electricity, and allowing to convert ways which are outside of our human perception into something we can, we can do an interpretation on. So stuff like ultrasound, x-ray, all of that is part of the second revolution. Third revolution, again, absolutely parallel to industrial revolution, based on electricity, based on microelectronics, yeah, we were able to actually use digital uh, equipment to enable automatization, to enable robotics, drones, and also to do stuff like, yeah, those reconstruction methods, like computer tomography for X-ray or SAFT and TFM for ultrasonics. And now we are coming to NDE 4.0, and this one we can take 
completely in parallel also to the Industrial Revolution. It's about, yeah, all of this data. Now, if we think about NDE 4.0, in my eyes, I currently see four big business cases. One is really how we can enhance our ongoing inspections with tools like AI, AR, and so on. Then there is the idea, yeah, if we are, if you are a producer of a ultrasonic system and you have all kinds of people operating your systems, then everybody is collecting data about those systems and you could use all of this data to actually statistically evaluate it and then enhance your own system and so that the customer finally gets a better system. Now for the third and for the fourth business case, I really have, I have some, ex some examples. I did uh, on some social media, I asked around on what people think about NDE and what they heard, yeah, on bad comments about NDE. And this was one of them. This wasn't there when I welded it. I guess most of us have heard a comment like this. And, but if you think about it, if we collect all kinds of data, if we use statistics, then we can show this welding, uh, this welding guy that actually, yeah, perhaps he's not that good a welder as he thinks. Or, the other inspector never rejected anything. Why are you rejecting so many pieces? If we have the statistics, we can show them why it is that way. Now the fourth business case, and that's for me the biggest one. This one here is a good example for it, why we need it. NDT does not have any value at all. It only sorts out parts that in reality are good. I don't want it, I would never ever do it, but my customer insists on it. I would prefer spending the money into further improvement of my production. So they see NDE as a, yeah, just something producing or costing him money. But why do we not help him getting where he wants to be? He wants to improve his production and we can help him doing that. How can we help him? Yeah, by giving him data so that he can use it for some analytics to improve his production. So now let's look into how we can get to exactly this point. Now if we look into a typical process, development process, we first have a lot of engineers working together to actually produce a new design and we are getting some design specifications, some NDE specifications, and we can try them in some field tests. We do perhaps some additional testing, and finally we are already getting here into a small feedback loop, and we can use all of that to improve our design and to improve our NDE. But now let's think about one step further. We're getting into a serial production. And during the serial production we are doing actually, yeah, all kinds of inspections. They have all kinds of sensors, they have all kinds of data coming from some production machines. Now, the small feedback loop we had here in the field test is nice, but here we are producing thousands of data files. We are really producing statistics. So by using all of that data and getting this one into a feedback, we can clearly help him improve his design. Now let's look one step deeper into the production. And if we look one step deeper, we see it's not just one NDE inspection, it's multiple. We have NDE inspection already at some material suppliers, it's going over to some component suppliers where we do inspections at the OEMs, like the guys producing a gas turbine, an airplane, or a car. And finally, also at the user side, we also have a lot of service inspections. All of the results of all of those inspections, if we take them and put them back into, yeah, into the beginning, into the digital twin, then we can learn a lot more about how we can improve the design. Okay, one step closer even, now looking into each individual inspection step. And we have here a couple of input parameters, those are the boxes in green on top, and it would be nice for us, especially as the inspectors, 
also to digitize them to make a more reliable inspection, to get a better traceability of the inspections, to have a, yeah, to improve our inspections. But what's really valuable for industry are more the output parameters. And number one, we have here those inspection system status informations. Yeah, this is really for the manufacturer of some equipment so that he can prove, improve his NDE equipment. But the other factors here, like the raw data, process data, metadata, and especially once we are coming here to the reports, this is where it's getting interesting for industry. And why are the reports the most value for them? Be yeah, because we already did an interpretation on the data. Now, we are getting all of that data, and now where do we store it? We store it in digital twins. And one implementation of the digital twin is the so-called Industry 4.0 Asset Administration Shell from the platform Industry 4.0. And this asset administration shell, you can have it for inspection systems like I show it here. But you can also think about an inspection shell, uh, asset administration shell for actually a whole production line. And underneath you have then the one for the inspection system, you have one for machining, you have one for whatever. You can have the asset administration shell for the component we are inspecting so that we can store all our inspection results. We can have it for detectors, probes, sensors, inspection equipment, whatever. We can have it for a software we are operating and also for our inspector. Now what means an asset administration shell for an inspector? Industry 4.0 doesn't mean a deserted factory. It means use automation where automation is good and use the human where the human is good. Tesla in the beginning, they tried actually just to do automation and finally they learned in some cases the human is better suited. So in NDE, we should still use the, our inspectors. They are our very valuable capability or valuable asset. Just what we need to do to actually integrate him is to give him the data in some electronic way like this is the component you are inspecting, them him having kind of a barcode scanner saying, okay, this is the, the component I'm inspecting now. And finally storing all these final inspection results back into some digital system so that we can use it for actually statistical, statistically analyzing it. So now we have the place to store it. Now, but how do we communicate with it? And if you think about Industry 4.0, Industry 4.0 is huge. It's a few hundred thousand to a few, yeah, I don't know how many people are working on that topic. And we as an NDE community are tiny. So the question is, we will not be able to actually tell them what they are doing, so, but we have to adopt on what they are telling us. And I looked into what the uh, International Internet Cons or Industrial Internet Consortium, IEC, is doing, and they have four core connectivity standards they are defining. One is called DDS. DDS is mainly for, yeah, very quick communications. That's not really NDE. This is more for sensors. This is more for a autom autonomic car, which is driving towards a tree and needs to react quickly. The other one is 1M2M. 1M2M is more coming out of the telecommunications business. Um, it's more for mobile devices. So for all those handheld devices we have, 1M2M could be the interface we're looking at. Web services. Web services is, yeah, it's mostly for human computer interaction. So if we think about integrating a, an inspector into the industry 4.0, web services will be one of the interfaces we have to use. But the most important one, will be OPC UA. OPC UA is, if we talk, it's, it's the interface in the manufacturing business. It's getting bigger and bigger. China even adopted it as, as a national standard. Um, and it also has a very strong aspect on semantic interoperability. And this is why actually, as our NDE, German NDE community, we decided actually to go with OPC way and to develop such a companion specification for NDE to enable exactly this, yeah, communication maybe. 
There is one point, big point, how do we deal with big data files? In NDE, we have all those thousands of gigabytes, if we think about computer tomography or SAFT. And if we look into the medical world, in the medical world, they also have HL7 for hospital communication, and then they have DICOM for the radiographic section. And in the middle, they have the so-called PAC server, which actually translates between those two systems. So if a patient is coming in, then they enter all the data into HL7. That data is given over to the DICOM section. Then they are doing the radiographic ins inspections or testing. Doctor is finally writing a report, and that one is then being fed back into the HL7 system. So we could think about something similar for our industrial world, using OPC UA for all of this general communication, and then using DICONDI to at least for archiving. I don't say we should be using it for every single system for internal communication. For archiving, I think it's, it has quite some value. Now, Daikondi is a, it's a good, it has its goods and its cons. Daikondi, it has a very strong semantic interoperability, which is a good part. Um, but on the other side, it is an old format, and so we are facing some issues with it. But the semantics we have due to Daikondi, we could use it for any other more modern interface or data format. So it's a good way still at least to look into what the Daikondi forum at ASTM was doing. So coming to the end. So coming back here to our inspection process, now how can we establish the interfaces for, them, for those input and output parameters. And for all the data, yeah, we could use DICONDI. And for all the input and output parameters, we could use OPC UA. So we're getting to the fact that we are getting NDE from an unnecessary cost factor. That's where we started, where our customers partially see us into NDE could become one of the biggest data treasures for Industry 4.0. And to help establish this, there is the IDSA and the IDSA. Now, one thing is very important if we speak about data. It's data safety on the one side, but on the other side is also data sovereignty. So to make sure that we, if we give our data to a customer, that the customer doesn't give it to anybody else so that we define who can get that data and what he can do with it. So, now, last slide, Rippy. <laughs> um, as I already said, it's a huge thing we are getting up to. This NDE 4.0 and all four key business cases we have here are something one, a single company, a single research institute cannot do. Therefore, we need to come together, to work together, and we have the community in Germany, which was founded in 2017, 2018. We created the one here in, the, in America. Also, the British founded, in the meantime, a group for NDE 4.0. And on the international basis, we now have also a group at the ICNDT. And on next year's World Conference, we will have a special session on NDE 4.0. So that one will be quite informative for a lot of people. So we are getting more, we want to get more even into international exchange. And in 2021, there will be in summer, there will be a yeah first conference on NDE 4.0 in Munich. So it's all about bringing people together and start working on this topic. So thank you for your attention. And yeah, for the questions, we have the panel discussion later. Thank you.